have a free press in your country, there's no need to buy newspapers and there's no need to watch the news because there's no need to listen to the lies. And you already have one real information. You are being deceived by the people you are governed. This is an enough information for you. His morning show and voice is like a morning ritual to some. Others don't believe any information from anyone aside him and that of a radio station he worked for. For the past six months, the voice of the opposition has slammed as a result of inactivity. This political shutdown of the radio station from the opposing party has affected the livelihood of many families attaining their dreams and also feeding their families. Alright, so it's uh, 15 minutes after 7. You're welcome. Uh, this is the Go Power Drive live on Facebook. It's live on YouTube. It's live on Instagram as well. We've been doing this for the past uh, two hours now because we started a conversation around uh, 5.30 there about and we've been talking about uh, the referendum which is going to happen on the 17th of December 2019 to vote a yes or to vote a no. The division, the political parties have taken their stance. NDC says no, MPP says yes. The chiefs have also joined the conversation. Some say yes, some say no. So should it be a yes or should it be a no? What would be the ramifications if Ghana decides to go yes or decides to go no? That's what's going to occupy our minds throughout the entire four hours this morning live on the show. I'd like to hear your views, your comments and your thoughts in our deliberations this morning. You send it to us on WhatsApp, you send it to us on Facebook, it will get to us and most definitely we will incorporate it in our discussions this morning. My name is Samuel Chen, and it's good to have you with us this morning. Let's roll on. The six-month shutdown of this radio station by the NCA has deeply worried workers and avid listeners desirous of being informed, educated and entertained. You wake up in the morning thinking things will change and absolutely nothing is being done about it. The main fact is that all rent chamber and horse have contained crowd greater Kraha, Sian Ersen, which are rent no or rent no or utility bills or so and son and quite that too are almost young kids who go school you pay their school fees every day almost budget. A canteen fee. We are we must be caught. And you are being said the life in Greater Accra. I was just saying, no, it is not easy. And we've run out of time to do that. She asked us to do all that. Now we are look. We are being looked in the face and being told that she is not interested in bringing back Radio Gold. The question is, who is behind all this? But for individuals like us, it's been difficult surviving. It's been difficult moving around. It's been, it's been quite emotional even walking into this studio, walking into this office. Sometimes you come here, you walk in here, and if you, are, if you don't hold yourself, if you're not strong enough, you come close to tears. I have struggled every time it is 9th of any month, from May 9th. Every time it is 9th, I've always struggled on that particular day because of what I know has happened. So it hasn't been easy. I, I, I don't need to even tell you. Just imagine that the work you're doing today, all of a sudden that work vanishes from your life. Some of you maybe watching us would have worked at banks. Now the bank is no more. Would have worked at the savings and loans no more. So imagine what you're going through and imagine what we are going through. Journalists sometimes die in their line of duty when covering stories to educate, inform and entertain their target audience and the research carried out by a New York-based organization, The Guardian found that 34 journalists died in retaliation killings in the year to 14 December while at least 53 were killed overall. That compares with 18 retaliation killings among 47 deaths documented by the committee in 2017. 
Ecco Angulo Medardo de 40 anni. Una battaglia sahafia, la tua tua di Polini è stato ucciso lo finale in Madrid, ha un shock, è stato ucciso il reporter Buta. Moscova è stata uccisa Anna Politkovska. Anthony Casambo, giornalista di Stato. The annual report, issued on Wednesday, includes the killing of the Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi, a native of Saudi Arabia fiercely critical of its regime. His death on 2nd October 2018 inside the Saudi consulate in Istanbul has led to tremors on the global political scene around allegations that the Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman was involved. Khashoggi lived in self-imposed exile in the U.S. and had gone to the Saudi consulate to formalize his divorce, where he was strangled and dismembered, allegedly by Saudi agents. One of the biggest international media houses based in Doha, Qatar Al Jazeera, had to spend a lot of funds in demanding free press because of attack on their journalists and other media companies around the world. And the stories that matter go untold and unheard. The press is not free. In Ghana, attacks on journalists and media houses have increased considerably. The latest victim of this was investigative journalist Ahmed Hussein Swali, who was gruesomely murdered by unknown assailants. If you would sit down and watch for stations that are deemed critical of government to be shut down, one day it might get to your doorstep. I remember my colleagues in the other media houses, what was happening to the us was none of their business. Until Ahmed Swali, mm, you remember that incident? Gone. And to our own friend and brother, Manasseh, had to flee for dear life. At a point, they thought it was not going to get to them. But you see, they came for the Methodist. You didn't speak. The Catholic, you didn't speak. The Pentecostal, you didn't speak. The Communist, you didn't speak. The Capitalist, you didn't speak. The Socialist, you didn't speak. When they come for you, the people who otherwise would have spoken for you, they would all be gone. The Rambo-style closure of Radio Gold by the National Communications Authority was appalling and exceedingly worrying. The notice was not more than 24 hours, which indicated how infamous the decision was. About how long it's taken for the restoration of the frequency of Radio Gold? That's at 90.5. Sometimes it's sad, especially when I'm going home in the evenings around 4, 5, thereabouts, and I want to tune in and listen to Kofi uh, Fifa. And I'll tune in, I'll get to Radio Gold 90.5, and I'll hear shh. And I'm hoping and hoping and hoping that one of these days Radio Gold will be back. The writings on the wall indicate to me that it may take a while before the frequency of Radio Gold is restored. It wasn't long ago that the communications ministry met the media to tell them about uh, you know how far they've gone with respect to the media space. And if you listen to the communications minister, her body language, her tone, it will tell you where we are going with this matter. The shutdown of over 50 radio stations by the NCA and Ministry of Communications comes with a lot of backlash and different interpretation depending on your stance. A lot of commentators see it to be a good thing and others think it's mere witch hunts perpetrated by the powers that be. 27 out of the 57 stations that were closed down have not submitted fresh applications for new FM authorizations. It is factually incorrect and a blatant untruth to say as some including former President Mahama and the Media Foundation for West Africa, who really ought to have known better, have sought to portray that only opposition radio stations have been targeted for closure using the law. No such intention actuated this exercise. And I am sure we can claim that all the 144 stations in breach of the Electronic Communications Act were NDC or opposition radio stations. I know for a fact 
that a station owned by the current deputy uh, speaker, Honorable Joe Teyusu, who cannot be an opposition member, has been cleared out. I know of only two, XYZ and Radio Gold, which fall within the NDC fold. And the latter Radio Gold had operated without renewing their authorization for 16 years. They are certainly not untouchable or above the law, as some would have us believe. The NCA Director General, Joe Anoche, repaved the claim when he said 15 of the radio stations which we applied have been licensed to operate freely. Now, in the documentation that an entity is, is required to submit uh, for uh, FM authorization, there's no provision given in there for a person deciding what frequency they want. When you fill the form, you can say that, okay, I'm applying, but please give me uh, this frequency. There's, there's no proof. Now, having said that, uh, of the 15, 15 of the 30 that we have processed so far, we ensure that the frequencies are maintained. So every, every one of them that have their uh, authorization, new authorization uh, frequency assigned, we ensured that the frequency, the same frequency was given. But I just want to be sure that when you are filling the form, you can say, okay, I'm applying, and please give me that. So should you be assigned a different frequency, it's, it's well within the mandate of the authority to do that. We just have an exercise that. Ishan felt for the communications ministry and NCA acted in bad faith after Radio Gold bosses can complied with you with the court application and reapplied for their license to be given back to them. Myself, how then do I believe what you said when you held a press conference to brief the nation that there was no political witch hunt in the case of the scrutinization of the frequencies of this country? Several radio stations have gotten their frequencies back. Several. Why not go? Especially when we have reapplied, especially when we have complied, especially when we had to withdraw the cases from the courts. How does it become easy for anybody to believe that this is not a witch hunt? This is not a clamp down on a station that is seen to be the only voice that exposes government when it comes to some of the issues they profess to be doing in this country. It will not be for me to say the government is witch hunting. It will be for you to say whether government is witch hunting Radio Gold or government is not witch hunting Radio Gold. The ball is in your court. You, the viewer. Senna, a reporter from Radio Gold, sees this as a political witch hunt from the past that be because the current government feels Radio Gold is the only mouthpiece of the opposition party criticizing the government constructively. Of the, the, the number of things that make working here at Radio Gold so difficult. There are lots of people who, when they see Radio Gold on your CV, when they see your face, when they know that you work with Radio Gold alone, they, they, they do not even want to get close to you. So this is just part of it. But we're hoping that this will be a much more understanding government. And we've tried, in fact. Radio Gold has done a lot. Over the past few, we could have gone to court. We could have continued with the demonstrations. But Parliament's committee came in and decided we want to intervene. We want to arbitrate the matter. Radio Gold has submitted itself. But we have agreed and we are working with the committee now we are finding out that the minister who had, who had asked all things of Radio Gold, including withdrawal, withdrawal matters from uh, courts, which means that we have no other forum to turn to. She's even taking that forum away from us. We don't even know if we are even in time to be able to file, let's say, an application for a review of the decision, whether we've run out of time to do that. She asked us to do all that. Now, we are, look, we are being looked in the face and being told that she is not interested in bringing back Radio Code. The question is, who is behind all this? 
A member of parliamentary committee, Honorable Sam George, gave a clear indication on why this is a witch hunt when he spoke on the biggest weekend political show, Al Haji and Al Haji. I may not, I may not be here next week, oh. but because I sit on the communication committee, let me tell you that the communication committee called NCA, mm. the ministry, and Radio Gold, mm. and XYZ, on the application of Radio Gold and XYZ for arbitration. The minister gave criteria upon which she would receive her decision. Let me state that Radio Gold met it, brought the evidence of meeting that criteria. The minister says after Radio Gold has met her own criteria for receiving her decision, she says she changed her mind. So she would not receive her decision. So I'm giving you this information for your discussion next year. Okay. Okay. So uh, yeah. Ishan believes that toll on them is very bad and they don't see if they can hold on if things continue like this. I have to drive all the way from where I live to this place. Let's say Kaswa, that's where I live. I drive all the way from Kaswa to this place every single day to come and drive this show with my colleagues who also come from afar. At the end of the day, no money is going to come from anywhere. But we've been doing this for the past six months and I, I think I must pause for a second and thank our viewers and our listeners on social media for the tremendous support they've given us throughout the period. I mean, people would call you to find out, some. how are you doing? How are you coping? Somebody would call you and say, okay, I want to give you, let's say, a five cities credit. The thought alone has been enough. But folks, it's been a very, very, very harrowing experience for us as broadcasters having to do online broadcasting when no revenue is coming. But you see, for God and country, or for country and God, whichever way you want to put it. Every day we wake up at 4 a.m. to come and do what we do. Because you see, there's a constituency of people who want to hear what we say. And so we are driven by that motivation to be here every blessed morning. And the online experience has been fantastic. I mean, streaming with over 200 people watching you live and sometimes by the time we are finished with the show, you know, over 2,000 people would have watched the show. That's commendable. But moving on, how long can we sustain this when no income is coming? Look, I've got colleagues, they have got families, I've got my own people who depend on me. Can I be able to sustain them next year as well? I doubt I can. The media house and industry players must stand together because tomorrow it could be them. If you would sit down and watch for stations that are deemed critical of government to be shut down, one day it might get to your doorstep. I remember my colleagues in the other media houses, what was happening to the us was none of their business. And to Ahmed Swali, mm, you remember that incident? Gone. And to our own friend and brother, Manasseh, had to flee for dear life. At a the point, they thought it was not going to get to them. But you see, they came for the Methodist. You didn't speak. The Catholic, you didn't speak. The Pentecostal, you didn't speak. The Communist, you didn't speak. The Capitalist, you didn't speak. The Socialist, you didn't speak. When they come for you, the people who otherwise would have spoken for you, they would all be gone. When the news is restricted and censored, when there is external interference and influenced and the news is used to exploit, not explain. When journalists' access to information is prevented and questions are refused. When the power is not held, accountant justice never sees the light of day. When voices are silenced, the truth is denied and the stories that matter go untold and unheard. The press is not free and neither are we. How long can we continue to shout down the voice of the voiceless? You can't shout down opposing voices and feel you have won the media space race. Radio Gold will never die. Alright, so it's just uh, five minutes to the top of the hour 10. It's been four solid hours live with us on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter as well. I would like to thank every one of you for joining us this morning. Those of you who sent your contributions in the form of voice notes, in the form of text messages, I'm grateful that you made time to join us this morning live on the show. We always entreat you to share the feed live on your walls. But it's been an exciting journey. Four hours discussing issues of national interest 
throughout the entire day. My name is Samuel Shen. I've been here with my colleagues, Ron Sport K. Boachi, Sananumo, Mr. Kwanza, Mr. Patrick Aspobodu, Mr. Eric Boatin. God willing, tomorrow morning, we shall be back. Which types of freedom you want to defend? You must defend all of it or be against all of it. Yeah.